Hello, my name is Kevin and welcome to the Love Decanter channel. So today I'm going to talk about um, decanter neck rings and yeah, my favourite subject, decanters, yay! So, um, yeah, so it is a funny one. It's a bit like when I was doing the shapes of decanters. Yeah, books are not always consistent. Um, in fact, I've ploughed through piles of books um, trying to see if there are any lists of decanter um, ring names in those books and yeah it's not I, I was fell in a few places and uh, I was unexpected and uh, anyway so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some of my book references show you some inconsistencies in those book references and um, and then I'm going to show you some neck rings and some of the things I'm going to show you are in the books and some of them are, are not um, and I'll I'll make a name up. Okay, so here we go. Um, we're going to have a. It's in the other room because I've laid them out on the floor because I was in there ages plowing through books. So um, yeah, we'll go in the other room and uh, I'll show you what I've got on the floor. So the first book I'm looking at here is um, The Decanter, an illustrated guide to glass um, from 1650 and by Andy McConnell. And he doesn't have a list of. Um, Neckties. What he does though is he shows you a little illustration of how they make and apply um, neck rings. Um, you can see it's put on a little worm of glass that's wrapped around the neck. So yeah, so that's how they were doing it. And um, so the I'll move on to the next book I'm going to show you here because um, I said that's. That's all you're going to get from him. Um, and this is Christie's Collecting Decanters by Jane Hollingsworth. So they have a few in here. And um, if I get down to these ones, you can see. Yeah, but these are only in relation to Irish decanters. Um, and so there's some missing from here. Uh, one of the things I call these, people call these one triple rings. Other books call them annulated rings. I prefer annulated because triple ring sometimes implies that there are three rings, um, which there are here. You can see there's three rings. Does that triple? Does that mean triple ring, or does that single ring mean triple ring? So yeah, I don't like triple ring as a description for this annulated ring. I prefer that other books call that uh, call it that. Um, so you've got triangular. Other people call those other things. I like bladed because I think that was about the first time I, I was, that was described to me somewhere. Yeah, there's these types. These are mainly Irish. Square, which is actually I, I've only seen as Irish, and uh, rounded. Um, I'll show you something to do with square that's like square, but it's not really a ring. But I'll show you that anyway. This book is called Irish Glass by Dudley. Westrop, and um, yeah, this is an older book. He's got myself, so he's using the name Triple Ring as well for this one. Then he's got Double Ring, which wasn't in the other book. Feathered Ring, but he doesn't have that vertical. Then he's got um, the Triangular Ring, which I call Bladed. Square Ring, Cut Ring, which other people call Faceted. Um, and I think that's a better description because when you see them, when I show you a real one, and then a uh, rounded ring. Um, so I think everybody calls these rounded rings or just plain rings. So, um, yeah, I think this is the most described one. We'll move on to another book. This book is How to Identify English Drinking Glasses and Decanters from 1830, from sorry, from 1650 to 1830 by Douglas Ash. He doesn't have so many illustrated, so he's got, um, yeah, he calls the top one double, but in actual fact, they were called feathered and vertical and not double because the double was just two rounds without any impressions on them. And then he's got square and rounded. And then on another page back here, he's got triangular. This book is the Arthur Negus Guide to British Glass by John Brooks. And yeah, this is different again. So we've got, he's calling it the plain ring, which is called rounded in all the other books. I call it plain. Um, 
triangular or knife edge ring. Yeah, nobody calls it knife edge. I said I call it bladed, but I've seen that somewhere, but I don't think it's actually listed out like this. Um, then you've got the triple annulated ring. And I said I prefer to call this annulated because it doesn't get it mulled up with a triple, triple ring decanter. Um, and then the next one, he's called this a milled ring. Now, this is called feathered in the other books. And to me, a milled ring is a single ring, not like a split ring like this, with just vertical bars on it. So I wouldn't count that as milled myself. I'd call that feathered. And then he's got cut or faceted ring. And I like faceted. So, yeah, there we go with that one. Um, yeah, if you're wondering why I'm on the floor in this room with bits of carpet showing is because, um, yeah, books are in here. Uh, so, yeah. So if you're wondering where all these books are coming from, yeah, they're in here. So anyway, um, with that, we'll go and show you some glass. So I'm going to kick it off by showing you the plain or rounded ring, which is just the ring as it comes naturally with no working or anything. They just attach it. And uh, yeah, this is a lovely um, late 18th century decanter. Get the stopper out of the way so I don't drop it. And you can see actually there's a bubble underneath there. This one is nicely done. In fact, you can see just here. I don't know if you can see that, yeah. That's where the lozenge was wrapped around and joined up. I don't, can you see, you can just about make it out just about there in the top can you see so you can see that this is like a sausage that's wrapped round and then smoothed in and you can just about see the join there it's not very clear on that one um the bottom one is the biggest ring and it's the most clear um in fact actually there's a strip of air going underneath it where that join is and it's got dirt in it so you can just see it there underneath the ring that's where the strip was wrapped round cut off and then just smoothed in so yeah so that's um, plain rings I'm going to show you another plain ring one this is much later so this is probably made about 40 years later than the um, late 18th century one this is probably from the 1830s and um, this is an Irish one and what you can see here is it looks like it's a triple, but what they've done is they've cut panels out between each ring. So the ring is applied, but they've cut a panel out between each one. So it kind of looks like it's raised up, but in actual fact it's not raised up. It's been cut away in the space in between the rings. So yeah, just... Be aware that that isn't a triple ring that's still a plain ring it just that the glass has been cut away top and bottom to give it make it look like a, a, a annulated ring i'll show you an annulated ring next to give you the idea so yeah so this is probably a waterford decanter from ireland from 1830s so here we go this is another irish decanter i don't know who make the maker of this one is um yeah these motifs are very irish these angle blazes, wheat husk, and these cross slip stitching here. And yeah, look at these rings here. And again, you can see a bit of dirt gone behind where the actual join has occurred. Um, and you can see another line there where the join is. So yeah, you can see, I'll show you the ring in profile. You can see it's got, they've run a tool around it it's actually squeeze the sides down a little and let the middle come up so you get that like triple effect you've got, but with the the middle one is the tallest they're very thin you can see by the end of my finger the whole thing is it's a bit thinner than my whole finger and then you but you've managed to squeeze make it look like three in one so yeah so that's um a triple ring or an annulated ring as i like to call it yeah yeah, triple is confusing, isn't it? Because 
that could be all three of those could be a triple ring you can have a triple triple ring but yeah so now we're going to look at vertical and feathered um, neck rings and the differences between them are very subtle and I have three very different decanters in front of you and you may not initially think that but they are because this one is English this one is American and this one is Irish so this is the one that I would say is feathered and if I pull it over and you look very carefully at the rings you can see if you look at this top one you can see that the the little ridges go at an angle can you see they're not absolutely vertical those goes that way and those go that way so they kind of like create like a continuously pointing arrow going round the decanter so yeah very subtle um, difference here like this this is again this is probably late 18th century maybe as late as 1800 with this kind of stopper in it but um, yeah and it's a small one so there's a one pinter and we've got this American one which is the other extreme because that probably holds a litre or more yeah and then this one is a bit mixed in that it's only just feathered, I would say. Yeah. In fact, I would say parts of the bottom one, the bottom ring, look vertical. Um, and then as you go around it, some of it looks feathered. Yeah, it's all... It's not quite consistent all the way around. Um, these rings are a bit different to the... They seem to have a bigger ledge on. And the... UK ones, so the tops of them are flatter. Um, yeah, that's really fine. And the other thing is that the the bullseye seems to be deeper and more more refractive in the middle. But yeah, that's so subtle. Um, I know it's American because I bought it from America. It was one of those like things on eBay where it cost you three pounds to buy it and fifteen pounds to post it. But yeah, so. That's the um, American one. So yeah, this one is a Irish Masonic decanter. And um, on this one, when you look closely, you can see the mills are absolutely vertical. So it's got the same split in the middle, but they don't create an arrow pointing in any direction. They're just straight up and down. Little ridges go straight up and down. Actually, let me pull in another decanter, um, a more modern one. Yeah, and when I said more modern, what I meant was only 120 years old, this one. So, or maybe older, but not over 150 years or 200 years old. So this has got a single ring in the middle. Uh, yeah, this is from the aesthetic movement. And you can see, yeah, it's got the same ridge with the double ring in it there um, so yeah so this is a a vertical um, or if it's on the negus it's milled but um, anyway they, it shows you you know if you see a ring it doesn't mean it's Georgian it means it's Georgian plus okay so there we go Okay, I figured we're doing Irish. I'm going to pull another Irish one in. So this one has got square rings. And you can see the square rings. If I turn it around, let's see if we can find some joins. In fact, there's one that's very clear where they've put the strip around, joined it here, sealed it up. Um, there's another join there. You can see it behind. I mean, when you run your finger over the outside, you can't feel it. That's actually inside. And is there a join for the bottom one? There's a join for the bottom one. Yeah. So there you go. So 
that's square rings. So I thought, sticking with the Irish theme, brought out this stonking Irish decanter, which um, probably at first sight might look like a ordinary cylinder type, but I bought it from Ireland and it's a bit more chunky than that. And um, yeah, we've got a lovely faceted or cut. Some people call it cut, I call it faceted um, neck rings. Um, and they've got little panels cut between the neck rings. Um, the other thing that makes it particularly Irish is the fact that the stopper is in the shape of a shamrock. So, yeah, that's a real stonking decanter. Um, so, yeah, that's faceted neck rings. And continuing with the... Um, Irish theme these are double rings and yeah it's confusing isn't it because there's only two rings on this decanter this is why I don't I prefer a different name for this but natural fact it's like feathered or or the vertical rings without the little marks on them but yeah this is double ring this is another Irish one I think I've been told it was cork I don't know anyway um but yeah, this is um, double rings. So yeah, so this is where the books fail us because um, this type of ring is not mentioned. These are later decanters. Oh, that one's a carafe. Um, this is from the 1870s. It's a Whitefriars T.G. Jackson decanter. And yeah, so it's like the vertical one, but there's just a single ring. I would, this is what I would call milled. And this is what um, Arthur Negus was calling, uh, sort of like double this, with a split in the middle kind of thing. He was calling that milled. I would say if there's just a single ring with milling on it, that's a milled one. Um, and I'll just show you. That one's a bit softly done. And yeah, I'll show you. I thought I'd show you this one. Let me get the stopper out. This one's more tightly done. So, yeah, so that's not in any of the books. Going away from the books again. So this one's got a completely, this is a carafe, by the way, but this has got something different again. So th I think this is White Friars, um, yeah, from the late 1800s. And um, I would call that a ruffled ring. See, I don't know how they do that. It looks like they've, they've had to put it on as they've gone around. Yeah. Don't think that is easy. But yeah, I would call that a ruffled ring. And I don't think they did this at all in Georgian time. So if you see that, it's probably going to be late um, 19th century or, or 19, late 19th century or later. So... This is a bit unusual. It looks like it's got three rings. Um, yeah, so this job drug is um, Lindhammer, so it's a Scandinavian one. And um, yeah, it's not rings at all. It's a spiral that's been applied. So yeah, and this is glass, look. There's the pontal mark. It's white glass. Um, yeah. It, it's, I really like this. I've got another different one with the same spiral on it, but longer. Anyway, um, and yeah, if you look at it, you're thinking, oh yeah, they would have had to put, put this on first um, to wrap it round and then put the handle on afterwards. So anyway, um, so yeah, so you need to watch out for those. On decanters, spirals are very rare on the neck, especially on the early ones. So if you have a Georgian decanter with a spiral on, it's very rare. I only have one and it's tiny. Um, yeah, they just don't come up. I'm now going to show you a few um, pieces where they look like they've got neck rings, but they don't have them actually. So there's this one. I'll show you this one. This is early, probably circa 1800. 
So these rings are not added. They're not like the worm that's been wrapped round. These ring, well, this look has been created by cutting away um, these little panels and just leaving the natural surface exposed. You can see how that works. Yeah. This one's a bit later. This is probably 1830s. And uh, yeah, so there's a bit of step cutting. And then in between, you've got some bands or freezes of fine hobnail. Yeah, this one's, I'll count this as Anglo Irish. It's nice because the stopper, a bit dusty. Um, Stopper goes with the neck with the bands that with the basically emulating the step cutting and the bands are fine hop now and then this one this looks like rings but this is um cushion cutting so they basically cut grooves in and then rounded them off so it looks like an applied neck ring but in actual fact that's not natural glass at all. That's just all been cut away to look like that. Yeah, so th those are n not neck rings. They're just grooved, cut in, and then rounded out. So, um, and I think I've got one more thing to show you before I pack up. And here we are at the end. Um, this is a Stuart Crystal Woodchester pattern um, claret jug and something... Stuart did, um, I think from the 1920s onwards, I think to the end when they closed, was create this. And I call these faux rings because they look like rings, but in actual fact, you can get your finger inside them because all they are is that the glass has been pressed out from the inside. If you see this feature, this is 20th century, okay? I've not seen it on anything earlier. Um, everybody else prior to this did it by applying a sausage of glass around the neck and then pressing it into shape. This needs less work because you blow it in the mold and spin the mold so there's no seam or anything. And um, yeah, so less work it's hot work you just do it as part of the blow so yeah that's why they went to that technique um, some people were still doing neck rings in the 20th century um, but yeah it became less common especially in the second half so I hope you enjoyed that little dip into my collection um, so I think I covered everything that was in the books and a bit more and a bit more than that. And um, yeah, so that's as far as I can really go with um, decanter neck rings. As I said, there are start points for some of them, but there's no end points because people have carried on copying them and making reproductions and all sorts. So, um, but at least you know what the naming conventions for them are. Um, and also you can tell the difference between one that's been you know, properly applied and not, and what is a neck ring and what isn't a neck ring. Um, so with that said, all the books I've used will be in the um, description below. And I hope you enjoyed this. Please remember to like and subscribe. I will be making more videos of this kind. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Good night.